Hello, and welcome to Casual Shenanigans Gaming, a podcast all about Daisy Arma Battlefield, mostly suggesting computer builds to people and hating on consoles. <laughs> consoles. Uh, <laughs> tonight it is just me, Germ Gaming, and Evil Viking. Uh, everyone else has deserted us for the real world, for whatever reason. Uh, so Joel sends means, his love and stuff, though. That means we can talk about <laughs> whatever we want. So let's start off with Dave being really tired. So, Dave, what's your excuse? Uh, actually, it's really kind of lame. I drank too much coffee last night, didn't get tired, played some Battlefield, and then did some dishes at like 3 o'clock in the morning. And swept the kitchen. I mean, there's worse it, things you could be doing at three o'clock in the morning. That's that's pretty yeah. productive. That's not that's not terrible. Didn't finish the dishes though, so I, I kind of feel like I failed <laughs> that one. <laughs> did you like get to a good stopping point, or did you get to where like the rack is open and you just have like stuff just sitting in it, and you just all right, that's good enough. I'm going I, to bed. I put all the clean ones away. Got the coffee pot cleaned. A bunch of the, like the the really dirty dishes. So yeah, it was productive enough. Yeah, of course you got the coffee pot cleaned. <laughs> oh oh, I got a coffee pot story. If you have time for that. <laughs> Uh, sure. Might as well. <laughs> this our, sounds uh, thrilling. Our, our small coffee pot finally died. We had this perfectly sized, like, you know, two person, like, I think six cup coffee pot. Finally mm-hmm. died. I bought one from Jason. He had an extra coffee pot. It's 12 cups. <laughs> First night by accident, I just filled it up full of water, filled it up full of grounds. Man, did I have some coffee the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I had enough coffee for like three, three, three days for like the two of us. It was just, it was ridiculous. Did it keep it warm for you, or did you just drink cold coffee? I don't know if you're a cold coffee person. No, no, I'm not. I, I popped the remains in the fridge, because I, I do lots of milk and stuff, so it, you know, it hides the fact that you're, like, microwaving coffee, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it hides the sad microwave coffee. It gets kind of oily and kind of sad, yeah, but it, <laughs> it's still full of caffeine, so... So uh, last week, one of the main things we talked about, um, well, you and I talked about and everyone else got bored of was uh, the fact that you and I both had some hardware dilemmas we were sorting through. (laughs) So I've kind of reached a conclusion. Uh, I don't think you have. Um, So, I mean, do you have any updates on on what you're planning on doing with your hardware troubles? Like, you're wanting to upgrade because you want USB 3 and you want your PCI ports back. And you you just want a little more modern chipset. Actually, tonight, my my USB uh, 3 Express, PCI Express card failed to initialize a couple of times. And that made me super nervous because I had a bunch of drives plugged into it, but it's working now. Um, Black Friday sales were really tempting. As you know, I, I think I asked you like about four or five different total Black <laughs> Friday sales. You talked me back from the edge. I I really don't have... You, you, you just wanted me to validate it. You wanted me to be like, yeah, do it. Do it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. By the time I was asking you questions, I was like on the last step of the Amazon cart. Like one more button to press and it would be all mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but honestly... There's enough stuff coming out and prices are still going down that there's no point to basically buy a bunch of stuff on credit or, or you know, take money out of my savings and put YouTube funds into it later uh, to buy parts Ooh. now. Like, it's really not worth don't, it. Don't, don't do that, no. <laughs> and, and you have a good point, too, is that I, I really want the performance in Battlefield, but it's more of a game issue than a hardware issue. I should be getting better performance than the one I'm getting, and hopefully that'll get better with patches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So my problem was I've been running Crossfire, and well, this is a good I've story. Had, I like I like this story. <laughs> had, oh, you want me to tell the embarrassing bit too? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's go. Let's go. I've had a seventy nine fifty since last December, um, and everything was going great. The seventy nine fifty is a wonderful card. Um, it overclocks like a beast. You can overclock it to be within spitting distance of a six eighty, considering that. At the time, they were selling for like 250 and 680s were selling for like 450 That's a decent deal. Yeah. Um, and I was having no driver's issues. Like, honestly, all of last year, like I really, or 2013 pretty much, I really haven't had any issues. Uh, but then the temptation of a second 7950 <laughs> popped up because they were dropping to like 200 bucks, sometimes 180 on sales uh, towards the latter part of the summer. So I was like, ugh. Like... <laughs> Two seventy nine fifties. That's going to be pretty beastly. I know that feel. Yeah. So I ended up getting one, and and for benchmarking for synthetic benchmarks, I mean they were cleaning up like twenty percent faster than a Titan, ten to twenty percent faster than a Titan in most things. So you know that was pretty awesome. 
Uh, but in real world gaming, it wasn't really going that well because the crossfire support was not there on drivers. For older games, the cards were so fast that it didn't matter, you know, because they could they could beast through anything. On newer Brute games, it. <laughs> the driver support wasn't good enough for me to actually get the benefit of using both cards on most things. So it was kind of a, I don't know if it qualifies as a paradox, but it was kind of like a, you can't win either way. Um, yeah. and it got worse. Like the, the worst was with battlefield four. I was getting like 35 to 90, <laughs> fr- 90 frames per second uh, yeah. <laughs> with stuttering. So I I just, I wasn't enjoying it at all. Um, so I sold one of the cards last week. I was trying to decide what I was going to do. So I sold one of the cards. I played with just the one card, not bad. Everything was going well, but I kept having crashes and driver issues and all kinds of stuff. Now, it's worth mentioning, the card I sold was the first one I bought, which was the Flex Edition. I don't really know what the significance of that is. But the other one I had was a dual fan design. It was a nice one, but it was not a Flex Edition. It was just a regular card. So after having, like, there was one week where I really couldn't even edit video stuff because it would crash every single time I tried to do anything. Your monitors were turning off constantly during the podcast. Yeah. (laughs) So as it turns out, I was not aware of what the symptoms of an unstable graphics card overclock are. Um, apparently, the symptoms of that are when it like it goes to black and then comes back and says the display driver has crashed but has recovered successfully. Apparently, that means your overclock is unstable. I did not know that. I thought I was going to get visual artifacting and stuff on the screen or maybe the computer locks up. Basically, all the symptoms were all the stuff you just described. <laughs> yeah. So... I was pretty much running that second 7950, now my only 7950, I was running it at too high of an overclock. That card could not overclock as high as the first one. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was my problem, was I was running it it too hard. And now I wonder, like, should I have, if I'd had this crossfire again to test, maybe if I just backed everything down 50 megahertz, it would have been golden. I don't think Battlefield would have been fixed, but maybe... No, I get micro stutter in Battlefield on two different computers very, very badly. So... Now, I was tempted by a Black Friday sale. I picked up a GTX 770. Um, I am working on a review of that, which will be up soon. Uh, Not blown away by it. It's pretty much a a rebadged, slightly overclocked 680. Um, I got an EVGA with an ACX cooler. Really nice card. Um, It's not that much faster than the 7950. Like 5% in most stuff. Um, So, we'll see. Um... Shadow you know, Play is going to be pretty awesome with the Twitch Shadow streaming Play, and well, Shadow Play. I, I like that. I've got it set up, so I think that's that's probably a worthwhile feature. Yeah. Um, but the other thing I'm excited about about it was there was also Black Friday sales on the Nvidia Shield, so I picked one up. It's not <laughs> here yet, uh, but for me, I think the Nvidia Shield is pretty much going to be like a Steam box, except I will have it now um, because for those of you who don't know, the Nvidia Shield is an Android based uh, Nvidia Tegra processed. Basically, Xbox 360 controller with a five-inch screen strapped onto it. Yeah. Um, and it can play all Android games, which there aren't that many great ones, but you can do that. Uh, that would not be worth spending the money on one for that feature. What it's worth the money for, well, I guess worth the money is subjective, but <laughs> what I thought it was worth it for was it can stream games from your computer to the device if you have an NVIDIA graphics card of a GTX 650 or better. Uh, and so the 770 lets me do that. Now the shield's not here yet for me to test, but the things I like about it are it can stream the games with very, very low latency. I've seen people do these slow motion tests and the latency, like it's, um, I mean, it's like 30 milliseconds or something like I mean, yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. Um, and you can also run an HDMI cord from it to your TV. So I can like lay on the couch and be basically gaming on the TV, uh, and I'm really playing on my computer, which is a really awesome feature, I think. And actually, in the most recent NVIDIA update, uh, they just updated it from 720p streaming to 1080p. You can stream 1080p at 60 what? FPS. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, really, like, that's the same resolution I play at now. That's uh, awesome. And I can do it laying on the couch. And, um, yeah, PC Master Race, blah, blah, blah. I do play with a controller for sev- several different types of games. Racing games, obviously. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of third-person games like Assassin's Creed and stuff. That's just funner with a controller. Like if you're running around, jumping off stuff. I think um, first-person shooters. I don't. I don't play with a controller. There's lots of things I don't. See, uh, Jeremiah, a true member of the PC Master Race, takes the best from both sides of the fence. 
and hoards it all to himself. Controllers, <laughs> the best graphics, keyboards, mice. Exactly, exactly. Wireless capability, streaming. We want it all. <laughs> so that's my plan. Is, yeah, uh, yeah. I might not even I might not even get a Steam box. Like we'll see how it goes. Or I wasn't gonna get one, I was gonna build one. Um, but my plan right, right now you were. <laughs> is to just use this thing and just see how it goes, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because this should really do pretty much everything a Steam box would do. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to try it out. I mean, I don't know if I'll make a video telling you my feelings about it or whatever, because it's been out for a couple of months. Plenty of people have talked about it, but I'm excited to try it out. Um, all the reviews I've read say it's a very high quality device, great battery life, like 10 hours of battery, yeah, which is pretty yeah. good. Uh, better than any gaming laptop by quite a bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that that's what I've decided to do. Um, I'm going to keep the 770. I'm not blown away by the performance, but you know, I've had AMD for a while. Uh, I'll have NVIDIA now, you know, there you just go. try it out and uh, I'll probably run this one into the dirt. And then when star citizen comes out, I'll probably grab a second 770 just so I can SLI. Although I, my second SLI port, when I was getting my second 7950 out, the, it was so tight. Like I could barely get my hand in and Ugh. I broke, I broke the little clip on the PCI slot that, um, oh. like it, you know, you got the little tab at the yeah, end yeah, of the PCI, yeah. the, the clip that clips over it. I, I snapped that off. Now I don't think it really does anything. Um, other than it keeps it from falling out, but I don't do anything with my tower that the card could like just fall out on its own. Cause once yeah. it's in there, the screws on the end, hold it up. They do all the support. That clip doesn't do anything. So yeah. I think I should be okay. I might need to upgrade my power supply. Um, I have a 650 watt, which, you know, people will say like, you need 800 Watts to run two cards or something. You don't really, when people do actual power draw comparisons two 7950s in a system, we're pulling like maybe 500 Watts. So I was running that on my, my 650. I need to find someone doing a power draw comparison, a real good one with an actual meter uh, mm. on 770s and see if I could run SLI on that. Um, but we'll see, you know, maybe it'll be some crazy other card by then and I'll just replace it and get that. We should have Joel do it. I've got a uh, power meter. He's got the 770 and the i7. <laughs> oh, we, we'll, we, we can't do that SLI because he only has one and I have one and we're like three hours away from each other. Yeah, well, we can do a uh, initial test. But I guess you could do. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You could. Well, no, that, that actually that would work. Um, yeah, I don't and have then a power you, meter. Yeah, yeah. You could just see what it's doing at full burn because he has basically the same processor as me. Because the, um, the main thing to check is to see what the overall system draw is, and then add the additional cards power to that, and make sure that you have enough overhead. Because with your hard drives and your fans, like every computer is a little bit different. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So th yeah, that that sounds like a plan. Um, but that's probably what I'm going to do. You know, I, I'm not blown away by blown away by this upgrade. I still maintain. A 7950, if you can get one for like 200 bucks, the stock's running low, so they're starting to go back up. Uh, but if you can get one for 200 bucks, I don't think there is a better card, honestly. Yeah. Um, NVIDIA just doesn't play in that section of the market, and they don't have to because their higher-end cards are the fastest. So they let AMD stick to the lower end. They stick to where they like to be, and that's how it goes. So anyway, let's start the podcast with the news. <laughs> Um, I'm talking about all of our crap. <laughs> sad news. Starting out with sad news. OCZ has filed for bankruptcy. What? Uh, really? Yep. Yep. Oh man. Um, they had financial issues for a long time. Um, they were like one of the first people out of the gate with good SSDs in like 2007, 2008, 2009. Wow. Did not expect um, that. I have a Vertex, or no, I have an Agility three in my computer now. I've got Agilities and Vertexes in a bunch of the builds I've done. Um, I work and stuff. I mean, I've used a ton of OCZ stuff. I've always been pretty happy with them. They're not the greatest company, but they certainly seemed very competent. So, um, yeah, you know, they just competition. They just couldn't do it really. Yeah. According to people who know more than I do, uh, what really killed them was when like Samsung and, uh, SanDisk and Corsair hopped into the SSD market. Cause they, they were brands with serious cachet. Um, yeah and people started jumping shit pretty quick but uh now toshiba has offered to purchase their assets toshiba wants to acquire them which is interesting i did not know this but toshiba's quality has gone way up uh they are second to asus in consumer computer reliability according to really? consumer reports for this past year yeah uh they are above apple uh, Lenovo's actually slipped a couple places, which was a little bit surprising because Lenovo used to be awesome, but it's Asus, oh, yeah, which yeah. has been on top for a long time. Uh, then Toshiba, 
And then Apple. I don't think any of Toshiba's designs are that good or that inspired, but apparently they are pretty good. That's really surprising because Toshiba, you know, back in, say, 2006, 2007 was like right there with like HP and Compaq in my mind for laptops. Yeah, it was yeah, awful. They were, they were crummy. I, I, mean, I think the designs are still pretty crummy, but yeah. apparently they're reliable, so whatever. There you go. Um, Call of Duty Ghosts, a big surprise, is the best-selling game on the next generation consoles. <laughs> Uh, Call of Duty Ghost, you know, there was some speculation. We thought maybe it wasn't going to sell as well because pre-orders were way down, but nope, it sold great. They haven't released exact numbers, but uh, it, it seems to at least have done as well as the last couple of years of Call of Duty games. Not um, quite GTA V though, right? No, but it wasn't It wasn't ever going to be GTA V. No, no. I mean, that's... <laughs> I just and, uh, wanted the, to, to enjoy that again. <laughs> <laughs> and the Xbox One actually had a surprisingly good launch. Um, it went on to sell close to the same numbers as the PS4. Uh, and just to put it in perspective, in 48 hours, the PS4 beat one year of Wii U sales numbers. Oh, that's... Yeah, ouch, that, ouch, that, ouch, yeah, ouch. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> moving on. Just Cause 2, pretty awesome game, like four years old or so, fun sandbox game. And uh, the group of modders made that multiplayer mod for it. Have you played any of that yet? Did you play? Yeah, me? I played with uh, with you and Joel last year. And okay, I, I actually, so. okay. Quick disclaimer, it was a lot of fun, but I felt so hollow inside afterwards. I was like, that was a really fun seven hours of my Saturday I just wasted, but I got nothing out of that. <laughs> like, there was no point. <laughs> but it was so fun. <laughs> it was fun. I, I probably should have stopped playing when you guys stopped, because, yeah, I played that for way too long that day. <laughs> now, they've been adding more features and stuff, supposedly, and it's going to be released as an actual um, an actual mob, uh, actual mod like in the Steam store. Yes, yes, um, indeed. So that's really cool. Um, there's a beta that's going on now through December 14th, uh, and then they'll announce the release date after that. So, But remember, uh, guys, modding is dead, and no one needs to support it whatsoever. Modding <laughs> is dead. Daisy. Um, <laughs> okay, now this is... I'm honestly more excited about this piece of news than anything else we're talking about tonight. Uh, work has begun on a new generation of USB. Have you read about this? And it's dual-sided, right? You can flip it's it either way. It's dual-sided. You, the, the new connector is called Type-C. Uh, it's going to run on the USB 3.1 specification. It's supposed to be finalized by the middle of 2014. It'll be about the size of a micro USB plug or Apple's Lightning connector on their newer iPhones and iPods. Nice. Uh, and it will be reversible for the first time. You know, you never get the USB plug right the first time. Never. You don't get Ever. it right on the second try either. It takes three tries. Yeah. Everyone knows that. And it's, it's always the third time when you put it back to how you tried it the first way and then it works all of a sudden. Like, explain yes. that to me. <laughs> Can't explain that. And I, I know that pain, Jeremiah. My, uh, my USB 3 hub is on the back of my computer, so I have to crawl behind my gigantic tower and fumble around in the dark where I can't see, hoping that I have the cord right. This is, this is my salvation that's on the way right here. <laughs> losing my sanity. I'm thinking about ordering just a five and a quarter inch bay adapter so I can just run a... Uh, so I can just have like eight USB ports in the front of my computer or something. I think I just need to go ahead and do that. I installed one for Joel, actually. Oh, I saw it. That's what gave me the idea. I did yeah. get this um, USB 3. Actually, it's a it's an eight port USB 3.0 splitter. Um, that sounds efficient. <laughs> well, the problem is it actually is pretty good. It's powered and everything. Okay, the problem nice. is that uh, it, it plugs in the back of the computer and it can't reach the desk from there because my desk is kind of a one off that I made. To live yeah. in a camper. So yeah. when I when we move into an actual place to live, um, I should be able to visit <laughs> then. Uh. MSI has announced what it claims is the world's first 3K, excuse me, world's first 3K gaming notebook. Uh, Wait. Which is out now. As in res like res resolution-wise for the screen, 3,000 pixels? 3K. Uh, it's 2880 by 1620. Okay, so it's it's horizontal, not not vertical. Okay, correct. Um, it's a fifteen point six inch laptop. Um, it has a i seven forty seven hundred processor, sixteen gigs of RAM, a GeForce GTX seven eighty, um, one hundred twenty eight gig solid state hard drive, one terabyte drive, killer N wireless, killer LAN card, Blu ray oh boy. <laughs> drive, USB ports, HDMI, blah 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 blah. blah. Um, Dyne Audio speakers with a subwoofer. Um, I feel like and, the pixel density on that 15-inch screen is going to be a little too much. Uh, 
No, I don't. I don't. I think it's good. I love pixel really? density. Because I, well, I've got a, too much. What does too much mean? Like too okay, much. Okay, so what? my laptop is a 17 inch screen, but it's uh 1920 by 1080p, and I find that to be like right on the edge of, of getting too small for like the UI and Windows. For oh, example. the UI. Well, yeah. Well, if you have a UI that scales better, like supposedly Windows 8 does, right? True. I've got Vista on it right now. So. Oh, why? Because it was 25 bucks. Well, I mean, why not, you know, why not upgrade? Because to upgrade would cost me a hundred bucks okay, to get a copy sense. of Windows you don't have 7. You any spare licenses of Windows 7. What about the one you used to have on your desktop? Put that one on. Actually, that's not a terrible idea, but the laptop is already, it's from 2006. It's already on its last legs. <laughs> now, the Xbox 360 was released in 2005. You <laughs> still play modern games on it, Dave. So what you're saying is your laptop wasn't even good and it doesn't even compare to an Xbox 360. The logic is infallible. That's right, Joel. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, this thing is going to be 2800 bucks, So it's not Yikes. worth the money, but whatever. Uh, 4K monitors. I'm very excited about this. 4K monitors are getting more affordable. Up till now, your choices have been one Asus 32-inch or 30-inch 4K monitor for like 3500 bucks. Yeah. Unsurprisingly, they are not flying off the shelves. Uh, but Dell, who never has cheap monitors, but Dell is throwing their hat in the ring. Um, these are all going to be, uh, 4k, which is 3840 by 2160 monitors. Um, they're going to, they're introducing a, uh, a 30 inch, a 24 inch and a 28 inch. Now the 24 inch is going to be a, a 1400 bucks, which is very cheap. And the 28 inch is going to be under a thousand. They say, now, if you're wondering why is the bigger screen going to be cheaper? It's probably not going to be an IPS. It's yeah. It's probably going to yeah. be a TN panel, which You'd say it isn't amazing, but that pixel density, I don't know. I would consider it. Um, I don't want one of these for gaming just yet, uh, but I would get one to do photo editing on. Uh, Imagine having to power that work. screen in games. That's... Exactly. I'm going to need a second 770. Um, or or get an R290 because they actually, they are beasts <laughs> at 4K. Um, but yeah, you know, I'd probably just game at 1080 for a while, honestly. Yeah, um, really. Because it, it scales perfectly. It wouldn't be any problem. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. Like I don't want one for gaming, but I want one for, uh, all the work I do. That Photos would, would look awesome. beautiful. Oh exactly. man. That oh. is my, that's my plan. So, um, yeah. Uh, okay. I have one more thing, but we're going to save that for our, our topic of the night. Um, we have I've got two. some Daisy and Arma news too, coming up here. Okay. We will get to that in just a minute. I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have two really quick tech questions. Yeah. First one from Master D twenty eight ninety three. Hey guys, really enjoy your podcast. Keep it going. Thank you very much. Question: I want to upgrade my graphics card. Uh, he has a GTX four sixty. He's been thinking about the MSI GTX seven sixty. What do you think about that card? Or do you know any good alternatives? Price range two seventy five ish max. Thanks. Seven sixty, huh? 760s go for like 250-ish. Okay. And a 760 is about equivalent of a 670. Okay, yeah. I wasn't actually quite sure how that lined up to previous gen. Okay. Doesn't sound too bad to me. What do it's you think? It's not too bad. Uh, I would look for a 7970 gigahertz edition. Yes, I'm um, sure you would. Well, that's a great card. It's faster than it, a 760. It is. It is. Um, yeah, a 760 wouldn't be bad, but if you can go up to 275, hold out for a sale where you can get a 770 for like 280. Cause that's happened a couple times, like after rebates and stuff or, Oh yeah. Yeah. Stretch the extra 25 bucks. Like if you can't, if you couldn't afford to do that, then you shouldn't be buying the card anyway, you know, wait an extra month or so. And yeah, get, cause get honestly that, that range of video cards, if you add just a little bit more to it, the difference that you can get in performance is significant and it would be actually worth adding on to, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I would, I would definitely try to do that. Um, okay. And then the second question is from Huzzah, who is a big friend of the podcast. And he says, hey, guys, I have a friend who's looking to, looking to ditch his MacBook and take on the glorious throne of the PC gaming world. PC Master Hallelujah. <laughs> He's on a budget of around six to eight hundred bucks, though. So any chance you can take the time to make a simple build for him? Yes, he will be building it himself. Uh, so Joel has sent in his build. Uh, let me read off his build to you. And I'm going to do a confession here. I don't have one, so I'm going to move right. off of Joel and Chris's. 
you're not going to mooch off of Joel's. His is a PlayStation 4 plus a Sony PS4 DualShock wireless controller plus Turtle Beach Ear Force headphones plus PlayStation <laughs> Vita plus a so- PlayStation Plus one year membership for $754. Oh, he didn't add my thing to it. I told him to add a full tower Cooler Master Cosmos case to hide the PS4 inside. <laughs> <laughs> you hide your shame. <laughs> now, uh, Chris put together a, uh, a build that is a FX8320 um, Cooler Master Cooler, an MSI 970 motherboard, um, G Skill Rip Jaws, 8 gigs of memory, an Intel. An Intel 530 series 240 gig SSD. That's a bold choice for this price range. Uh, a Caviar Blue 1 terabyte, uh, a GTX 760, uh, an NZXT case, and a Rosewill power supply. Um, nice. And that all, what does that all come to? That comes to 843. So that does need to be trimmed down a little bit. Uh, for this budget, I'd probably dump the SSD. Honestly, and just go with a standard hard drive. Because in the future, you can upgrade to that so easily. It's... Right. I mean, SSDs are awesome. It's just a uh, it's a cost thing. Or just drop that from a 240 to a 120. Because you can get 120s for like 80 bucks now. So that would hey get guys, you under uh, budget. Actually, a quick tip for if you're not able to afford an SSD for your initial build, a great thing to do is is actually take your, your disk hard drive and partition it when you install your operating system. Put a partition for whatever size SSD you're going to buy. So say set aside like 180 gigs for your SSD partition. Install your OS and your important programs on that. And when eventually you do buy your SSD, just image that partition onto the SSD and you're good to go right there. No reinstalling. Oh, that's really smart. I've never thought about that. Yeah, bam. That's a good good plan. Um, I like Chris's build. Um, I feel bad saying this since he's not here to defend it. The only issues I have with it are I had that chipset when I had an AMD processor. I had the 8350, which is really the same as the 8320. It's just clocked a little higher stock. Yeah. Um, and I had a 970 chipset board, and they do not overclock the FX series that well. Uh, you're going to get like a 5% overclock maybe. So Ooh. that means you're going to be stuck with a 3.5 gigahertz processor, even though it's an 8 core, it's 3.5 gigahertz. And with AMD, you need much higher clocks than that. That does not compare to Intel clock for clock. Yeah, um, yeah. So the 8320 and the 8350 can easily hit 4.5 gigahertz, but you need to have a better motherboard to do that with. So that's the only issue I see with this build. I will throw this build in the description, of course. Um, now, I have a build. Let me bring up PC Part Picker. Um, I should log in real quick. Should have done this before the podcast. I remember what it was. I actually, I did go to do a build and it was down for maintenance PC part picker. And then it just got shoved aside today. (laughs) I did try. I guess it happens. It happens. Um, Now I went, uh, I went a little different on mine. Um, All right, here we go. All right. So I went, here's my, my reasoning behind the build. I'm about to tell you about, Um, I figure, He's just getting into computers. We should try to get as much of this to last him as long as possible. Yeah. So I went more processor, less graphics card. Go with a cheaper graphics card in two years. It'll still play stuff pretty well. And then in two years, just upgrade. Um, and you can keep everything else for quite a bit longer. So with that in mind, I picked out an i5-3570K, a ASRock Z77 Extreme 4 motherboard, which was my motherboard and processor. I'm very happy with them. Cooler Master Hyper 212 uh, cooler, my cooler, very happy with it. And with that, you can easily overclock to 4.5 gigahertz. Uh, 8 gigs of Crucial crucial Ballistics RAM. Um, a Corsair 200R mid tower, that's my case. Uh, and for 40 bucks, it's amazing. Like, this case is awesome. I would highly recommend this to anyone. Um, nice. And a Corsair 430 watt power supply. Um, the hard drive is a, uh, Barracuda one terabyte. And then the graphics card is a GTX 660. Um, cause that's only 170 bucks and it's a pretty good card. Yeah. Um, and that comes out to 706 bucks. So if you want to bump it up a little bit more, you can just go ahead and get a nicer graphics card. Now you could just bump up to a 760 or a 7970, 7950, um, something like that. So again, that will be in the description. Um, but that's probably what I would do. So uh, you want to talk about DayZ, and then we'll talk about Battlefield? Yeah. Go for Day-Z it. DayZ and Arma, actually. Oh, yeah. All right. So what do we have for DayZ? DayZ? I want to talk about Arma first, though. <laughs> talk about Arma. Go for it. Um, They actually just released, I guess it's not quite just Arma, but Bohemia Interactive released the assets for every single one of their previous games in torrent form. We were actually talking about like legit torrents last week. 
Uh, every asset from every game is now available for modders to play around with, to improve on, to edit, to make mods with. I assume that license-wise, you can't take guns and put them in Skyrim <laughs> from Bohemia's games, but uh, inside of the Bohemia sphere of games, now you have this giant pool of assets to pull from, which is pretty awesome. Which I wonder, like, I wonder what that's going to look like. Is Daisy going to have some crazy mods? I mean, the the people have had no trouble getting the assets already, from what I can tell. So uh, these are, from what I understand, source files for the assets. Oh, so maybe we will get some crazy mods for Daisy and stuff. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, now I will say I'm not sure if Daisy standalone is included in that current uh, file dump. I would imagine it's actually not because it's, it's probably unfinished. not. Yeah, it's. Because it's not final, and uh, they don't want to leak too much about it, I'm sure. Exactly, exactly. And there's probably quite a lot we haven't seen yet, at least as far as art assets from Standalone. Um, mm -hmm. And in addition, Bohemia announced a modding contest for Armor 3. Had you heard about this yet? Uh, yes, very briefly. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. It'll actually be judged next October, so it's going to be almost an entire year of development time for modders. There's different categories for best uh, total conversion, best, I think, uh, mission, best like asset or asset pack, stuff like that. But the total prize pool, and guys, this is where all of that Daisy mod Arma 2 money went. The total prize pool for this is 500,000 euros. Now, is that is for staggering. the person with the best mod or what's it for? Like, how, how do you prize for what? It's split up. Um, I believe each category has like a top prize and then like three to five secondary prizes. The smallest prize that I saw was 20,000 euros. So That's not bad. <laughs> I mean, even if you spent like a month, a couple of, of good months, and as long as you actually ended up winning something, like you could make this into a job. It's just that there's obviously, you know. A job for one year. And, and probably that's, they, they're going to hire people out of this, I'm assuming. The first line of the contest page says something like, um, yeah, <laughs> set out for victory, receive the ultimate recognition, and kickstart your career in games development. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you going to make a mod? Uh, I'm actually considering starting out by doing a, com a complete uh, import of my 1911 into Arma 3, like full animation, sound, and have it as an asset for anybody else to use in Arma. That's cool. Uh, I mean, more guns, more fun, right? Well, Arma's about the only game that could take advantage of your high res, like <laughs> how good that 1911 is. Or, or so. Battlefield, but, you know, DICE hates modders and stuff. EA hates modders. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, that okay. and Frostbite cool. is now like a, a giant thing in, like, in, in EA's I corner. I think the evidence is there that you don't want to be tampering too much with Frostbite right now. Yeah. I think yeah. Frostbite's a very angry small child. Or a very angry large child that needs to be <laughs> calmed before you try to do anything with it. But yeah, basically. Uh, okay, so that's the Arma news. Now with DayZ, they've had some uh, a couple big days on the DayZ yeah. Dev team. What have they been doing? I Actually, ask as he takes a drink. Yeah, yeah. Let me fuel up for my DayZ news spill here. Here we go. I'm ready <laughs> to go. <laughs> uh, the big event this week is um, after all these last couple months of kind of lame to talk about like network bubble and performance fixes and tweaking and stuff like that uh they had a 50 player test for the first time and uh players were actually playing for multiple hours on a almost full server which is pretty exciting to see coming out of these tests at the same time they are finding a couple issues with, with performance as far as the uh the zombies are taking up too many server ticks uh, on the other hand, loot, they had like 15,000 loot items spawned in the server, and Dean was saying that uh, those 15,000 loot items was only taking up one tick or one frame on the server. That's pretty good. So their goal of, I think, what was it, like 100,000 loot items tracked across the server is definitely within reach already here in this pre-alpha stage. It's just that they're going through now and doing a day-to-day, -day, like, uh, performance tweak and then figure out what that broke because you know you you make things uh, more optimized and you add in shortcuts I'm not a programmer so I'm probably explaining this really poorly but as you add in shortcuts and things like that it does break other things and you have to kind of adjust the the flow of the game and they're going back and forth right now day to day and it is cool because for the last few days Dean has been posting some really detailed programming updates about what they're working on each day and 
at the risk of sounding like every podcast for the last year, it does sound like it, we're going to be pretty close. Uh, we, we have to be now. We have to be. <laughs> yeah, we're so close, guys. Uh, I, I think Oshi, uh, Oshi's guess of before Christmas is looking pretty good because they're really pushing to get it out before everyone heads home for Christmas. I said Thanksgiving through Christmas. I called it, unless I'm wrong, in which case, whatever. Um, well, I, I was telling Joel, like, one of us is going to be right, actually, one of these days, but it's not going to mean anything. Like, we could, we could stand next to a calendar, close our eyes, flip through it, and point, and it's just as good as all these guesses we've had for the last year. Says the guy who was already wrong. <laughs> many, many times over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what's going on with Daisy. It um, good, good progress. There's um also some excellent hype train gifts on the internet. So oh, they're hilarious. Choo choo. Some of them are really <laughs> elaborate too. Uh, yeah, I guess yeah. people are spending all their not Daisy time doing that. But uh, yeah. I'm definitely glad that I've gotten to spend about a hundred hours, hundred and ten hours in Battlefield Four so far because uh, that's gonna end as soon as Daisy comes out. It's all <laughs> over. So let's go ahead and transition into Battlefield 4. So before we get into the editorial portion of the podcast with more opinion, let's just lay out the facts first. Uh, and you jump in if you feel like I'm being unfair at all, because I'm not trying to be. I should have brought a flag with me. <laughs> <laughs> Battlefield 4 has had a pretty rough launch. Uh, it does not suffer from a lot of the issues that Battlefield 3 did, of just like no one could connect to anything and nothing worked for a couple days. Yeah. Um, they seem to have got the server load figured out. They don't seem yeah. to have problems there, but they have lots of problems with the game crashing, micro stuttering. The net code is horrible this time around. Um, different people are experiencing different problems to different severities though. So it's not like everyone's getting hit with everything, but there are a lot of annoyances uh, that have kind of built up to where the general consensus on the internet is battlefield four is extremely promising, but not very fun right now. Um, And EA, or DICE, just announced that they're going to halt production of all their other projects, they said. Now, we don't know if that just means other Battlefield things or what. They clarified today, actually. Uh, That does not mean that Battlefront and their other games, possibly Mirror's Edge 2, are being put on hold. But the entirety of their Battlefield and, and shooter team, at least the programming side of it, uh, all their devs are working on Battlefield 4. I imagine the artists are still working on stuff for the expansion packs because you can't Probably. have an artist come in and do netcode stuff. Right, That's right, not how it right. works. So, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're going to put everything on hold until Battlefield 4 is fixed. Uh, so that so, may delay, actually probably will delay the DLC schedule for Battlefield 4 by at least, a, I'd say a month is a I'm good okay possibility. I'm okay with that because, I mean, honestly, I haven't really had time to enjoy the vanilla maps fully and here comes China Rising, like storming out of the gate. <laughs> and I felt that way with Battlefield 3. It felt like like they're just dumping maps on us. I would be okay with fewer expansions if they had other more stuff going on in them. Yeah. Um, uh, it's mostly just maps and weapons each time, which is nice, but you get to the point where you have like 29 maps, and it's like you can't play on all of those. Um, and there are some time issues with even just China Rising. I, I will say that graphically they're a step down from the, the vanilla maps. It reminds me a bit more of Bad Company 2. It looks good, just not quite as new and next-gen as Battlefield 4. And there's some noticeable lack of evolution. There are no major evolution events in any of the new maps. Mm, that's it's interesting. All, it's all micro-destruction. And a level designer actually discussed it on Twitter briefly, saying that uh, with the time crunch for the maps, they decided to focus on a consistent overall experience versus trying to like make a gimmicky like revolution event. Which honestly, I kind of favor the small stuff anyway. So, well, well, the revolution stuff's kind of gimmicky anyway. Um, right, right. It's neat, it's, but it's, it's not, not like... dynamic. It's canned. It's a canned thing that happens on on each map. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's get into the opinions then. Uh, I. Well, I'll go and then you can re- rebuttal the things I say. Because uh, you, I, I'm a big Battlefield fan. Let me start out by saying that. I love yeah. Battlefield. I've played <clears> it for years. Um, I don't feel like I should have to like justify my love of the game for anyone who watches the channel. But I am going to just in case. Uh, <laughs> but and this is something a lot of people on the internet have not been understanding recently. It is possible to love something and still be very disappointed by it. Yes, uh, yes I love is. Battlefield. I'm very disappointed in Battlefield 4. I just have not been having fun at all. Part of that might have been my video card crossfire issues. 
Uh, but that's also partly Battlefield's fault for having micro stuttering problems because it's had it since Battlefield Three and Battlefield frame 3. rate issues and frame rate issues and stuff. Um, so that's been very frustrating. The game crashes a lot. It's very frustrating. Um, micro stutter um, and the netcode and the netcode. There's a lot of explanations on the internet you can find. Basically, the bad netcode means there's so much stuff going on on the map, and it's because they're trying to do so much, mm-hmm. all the destruction and the physics and everything like that. Um, that the server's trying to process too much information and it cannot keep up with the hitboxes on all the people. And so people will shoot you where you were a half second ago and kill you. Um, you get killed behind cover, basically. Like on your screen, you're like behind a crate. On the enemy's screen, you're still looking at them. Right. And the server and decides that you should probably be dead. And you get killed behind cover. You get killed. I mean, a lot of times I'll spawn in and get killed like out of nowhere and I have no idea. Like one hit kills. That was another problem. There's been a, a, a bug on some of the bullets where yep. if it hits you, it instantly does like what? Three or four damage, like three or four bullets of damage. Well, it's actually part of, of, of how Battlefield does its ballistic system. Games like Call of Duty are hit scan where the bullets are essentially like, like a, a laser. It's a very accurate, very quick, very skill based system. There's no drop. Like Counter-Strike is the same way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's why if you're wondering like, why are those games so smooth and fluid? That's why. They're not simulating yeah, yeah. much. They're very simple hit scan for their ballistics, whereas Battlefield does calculate uh, drop. And, and actually there's a, a projectile that has speed and, and drop and distance. Not quite as as extreme as Arma's system, but then obviously. Arma's multiplayer could never handle everything Battlefield does. Arma <laughs> right, drops. Right, right. I mean, just look at Wasteland. It's the same number of people as a Battlefield map, and the frame rate gets cut to like a quarter of what it is normally. So, so the issue with the uh, the one hit kill bug is actually really interesting. It's because there's actually that projectile that travels. There was a bug where if an enemy would shoot you and the bullet entered your head's hitbox. The ballistics is calculated on a frame tick basis. I believe it's the server's frame ticks. Uh, and if the tick was going too quickly, it would actually tick with your head's hitbox twice as the bullet traveled through it. So what should have counted as one headshot for the enemy would be two instant headshots. And for a lot of weapons, that meant instant kill. And I think I've been experiencing that a lot because it seemed to be getting killed immediately way more in Battlefield 4. It happens a lot. I hate to stop you right there. I need to go to the bathroom, and I've been putting this off as long as possible, but I'm totally not going to make it through the rest of the podcast. Yeah. So I'm going to let you talk about Battlefield for a bit, and you can catch me up when I get back. How's that sound? <laughs> All right. I'll give my perspective. Go for it. All right. Go for it. All right. So um, as Jeremiah said, I'm kind of our group's long-term Battlefield fan. Uh, I've been accused of being the fanboy at times. Uh, I, I do absolutely love the series. Uh. Ever since, I believe, Battlefield 2, I mean, I played the previous ones, but ever since Battlefield 2, I have always had a Battlefield game installed at all times. Uh, no matter what other games I'm playing, I'll always find time to go back to Battlefield, at least for a little bit here and there. Um, especially the last couple of years with Battlefield 3, I've really been playing the daylights out of uh, out of Battlefield 3. Just that, uh, that sandbox multiplayer experience is something that... Um, most games don't offer, and it just, I don't know, it, it fits my idea of, of something just really awesome that modern games can do. We have 64 players with all of these virtual toys, uh, and it's just, it's a great experience. Um, and I'll continue this by saying that because of how much I love Battlefield and the concept of Battlefield and the idea behind it, I too am pretty disappointed with Battlefield 4 so far. I said on Twitter a couple of days ago, uh, on paper, this should have been the best Battlefield game to date. Uh, I did love Battlefield 3. There were a lot of things that did seem unfinished, ideas that, that weren't quite all there, things that did not work as well as they were hoping for. And when I heard that Battlefield 4 was going to be another modern shooter, another modern Battlefield, I was like, okay, I see what's happening here. Uh, it's coming right on the heels of Battlefield 3, this is probably going to be the game where DICE steps back and says, here's all the stuff we c- didn't quite get right with Battlefield 3. Here's the stuff we wanted to get right and, and just couldn't for various reasons, time or engine limitations. I figured this this game with Battlefield 4 was going to be where they got it all right. And they got a lot closer than Battlefield 3, I think. But they also uh, kind of fell short of the mark. What fell short of the mark? 
Welcome back, sir, to your podcast. <laughs> uh, I, I was basically just waxing poetic about my love for Battlefield a bit there and finishing up by saying that, uh, as I was saying on, on Twitter a few days ago, I really felt like this was going to be the best Battlefield ever on paper. It was going to be being a second modern Battlefield following on the heels of Battlefield 3. It was going to be them perfecting everything that they wanted to get right with Battlefield 3. Like, it's going to be Battlefield 3 refined and perfected. Is what I was expecting, and mm -hmm. it got closer, I think, than Battlefield 3, at least uh, as far as concepts, uh, the ballistics I enjoy better, the vehicle damage system I enjoy better, I like the mm -hmm. destruction better than Battlefield 3, um, gosh, so many things, the weapon customization feels like it's much more it's fleshed out than Battlefield 3, like how in Battlefield 3 all the pistols were separate models you had to select and, and stuff like that, a lot of those things just felt so rushed, um, and because Battlefield 4 reached for the stars once again and got so much closer the fact that it fell short and has all of these issues that really just take that layer of enjoyment right off the top it makes it so frustrating because the game should be amazing but the issues that we're having are just enough to make it where you're focusing on the frustrations and not all the awesome stuff and what makes me upset is they knew I guarantee you they know yes. they knew before this game released. They knew these were issues and they released it anyway, which is the problem. This isn't just a battlefield problem. This is a problem with like the entire games industry, the entire software industry. Everything is released broken and people fix it later. There's been the yep. one major game in the past year that just did it right, and that was GTA, because they said, you know, this is one of the biggest game launches in like, you know, every every time GTA comes out, it's the biggest game launch of the year. <clears throat> yeah. And they said, Nope, we're gonna push it back like four months. Because it's not ready yet, or five months, or six months. I mean, it was a decent amount of time. They said, yeah, push it was push at least back. six months, I think. They said yeah. it's not ready, and they pushed it back. Uh, and it released. I bought it, played it all the way through on my PS3, sold it. I did not have a single crash, freeze, corrupted data, nothing. It just ran yeah. the entire time. Um, and for a product of that scale, that's an incredible feat. I mean, exactly. that's amazing. Grand Theft Auto 4 did not run that well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it did not. <laughs> um, so we'll see how the, the, the PC port of, oh, of Grand Theft Auto 5 goes. But so they knew. I guarantee you they knew. But because they've got this whole you got to release, you got to compete with Call of Duty, you got to be like the, the fall shooter release, they sacrificed the polish of the game for features and features are nice, but if they don't work well, who cares? I honestly, I don't put most of the blame for my old video cards issues. I don't put that on AMD. Um, I, I love AMD. I think they make awesome products for the price. Yeah. Um, I put most of the blame on like software is released half baked. And so the graphics card driver, like they have to try to release drivers to work with his broken software and then stuff gets patched. And like, it just goes in this big circle of everyone trying to patch <laughs> everything to death. I mean, you didn't used to patch games. They just held them until they were ready, and then they released them. Yeah. Like, and you could download patches manually yourself if you wanted to, but you didn't have to. Like, patches used to be for balance and stuff, not because the game wouldn't function if you didn't have it. And yep. software does that, too. As soon as Adobe went from boxed copies to the online, the Creative Cloud versions of Photoshop and InDesign I'm not using. I went back to CS6 for those two because they don't work. InDesign crashes every time you try to load a bunch of fonts like all your system fonts into it, like I've been doing since in uh, since InDesign CS3 yeah, with yeah. their problems, and Photoshop, same thing. It just crashes constantly. And it's ridiculous. Like, just because you can patch it all the time does not give you an excuse to release yeah. a broken game, except for the fact they knew they could get away with it because it's Battlefield. That's why they did it. Yep. Uh, and I love Battlefield. I love Battlefield. But they really messed up. I mean, they... they they got Battlefield 3 to a pretty good state of polish. Yeah. By the end, I still I had a, one or two minor issues that persisted the whole time through. Um, and, you know, who knows if that could have been something regarding my particular components or something else. Like, yeah. You know, I don't know exactly why, but I had a couple issues the entire time. But most of the other issues got ironed out. Battlefield 3 ran very smoothly by the end. It ran very smoothly. Um, it was pretty reliable. Like, the server joining and everything just wasn't that bad. Like... They pretty much got it all ironed out, and then it feels like we're back to square one. Except, in some cases, worse. <laughs> in some cases, worse. The net code yeah. is very, very bad. Um, the stuttering is very, very bad. Right now, uh, the game is just not very good. And it's so inconsistent, too. Uh, the micro stutter is one that, that really gets me. I get a lot of micro stutter when there's an explosion, usually a vehicle that happens near me. And sometimes 
I don't drop any frames. Like, a vehicle explodes near me, everything is nice and smooth. Other times, I was flying with Joel in a helicopter last night. We flew in low over a tank and we blew it up. My game froze for basically an entire second, uh, probably about 70 frames. When my game, like, caught up to the rendering, we were dead on the ground. Mm -hmm. Because I have flown right into the ground. As soon as the tank that we were killing exploded, my whole game just froze. The stutter was that bad. Yeah, and it's just... It's bad. Now, they are doing something pretty unprecedented. I can't remember the last time a company said, we're going to stop and fix everything. Um, and actually, they're going to pay the price for it because their stock price dropped like 8% today. 14%. Now. Four, oh, whoa. It dropped a lot farther then. Okay. Now, I imagine that's a very temporary loss. I'm sure it's going to regain some over Probably. the course of, of tomorrow. But still, for an initial drop, that's... Ugh. EA makes most of its decisions based on its shareholders and profit. Yeah. So for them, that's got to be pretty terrifying. Um, but I mean, they have to do something. Like as it is right now, the popular battlefielders, the only ones who have, aren't kind of turning toward turning on them a little bit, uh, are the ones who get like flown out to see the game early, and you know the ones who uh, get a little bit of special treatment. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to say that to sound like eh, look at them. They're, um, they're not like bought or anything. They just have more on the line. They're they're focusing on the good parts, basically. Right, exactly. And I don't blame them for that. You make a living off doing it. I mean, there's still there's plenty of good stuff to appreciate. You can appreciate Absolutely. all the good stuff. Yeah. Um. So that's you know I haven't put out any Battlefield Four videos yet. I've put out like I've used some of the background footage for commentaries and stuff, but um I I'm just not at the point where I can do anything with Battlefield right now. Like it's I haven't even I don't even feel like I've gotten used to the balance of the game. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of them trying to make amends, uh, there was there were two things they were trying to do besides putting all those resources back to patching the game to, to make up for all the issues. There was like what was it a week and a half of double XP, which is them hitting a button. That's not a big deal. Like whatever. They do that <laughs> all then, the time. There's double XP like half the time in Battlefield. It felt like. Yeah, yeah, and there's double XP for premium this weekend too coming up. <laughs> but their second part of that was. There's supposed to be some sort of like dice exclusive 1911 pistol with like a 3x scope on it. Just some silly thing. We were all supposed to get that today as an apology. Well, the update broke. No one got the pistol. They're working on it. <laughs> like how terrible is that? They're trying so hard to make amends and even the amends is failing. So what do you think they need to do going forward? Obviously stopping to fix things is good, but... What do they do? They need to do something to make up for this to the fans. Um, or is fixing the game making up for it? Yeah, gosh. With SimCity, they gave out some free games. Um, these issues with Battlefield have not been as severe as SimCity, you know, where people couldn't play it for like a week at all. But still, it's been a pretty frustrating experience. If there was a way for them to see like who bought the game in say the first two weeks. Maybe those people deserve something. I, I don't know. I was gonna say, uh, what if they made premium ten bucks? Uh, then that could do ten bucks, maybe 20? half off or something. Twenty, twenty-five, maybe. But uh, like, okay, for me, I'm not expecting much because I put a hundred and ten hours into the game <laughs> so far in like just over a month. Um, a lot of that had some frustration involved with it but at the same time at the, at the same time i've had quite a lot of fun with it like i feel like i've gotten my my value out of it despite the frustrations i'm relatively satisfied like i'm fine but other people have had a much worse time and those are more the ones that i'm worried about like i think i wish there was a way to figure out who's really had a rough go of it and and reach out to them I you mean, you be quiet down with your video card overclocks over there. <laughs> okay, well that was that was one issue, but there were plenty of issues with just Battlefield itself, right, besides right, the yeah, video card it's... overclock. Um, but I, yeah, I'm I'm not, I'm not a big enough channel for them to care, honestly. <laughs> so I'm not expecting <laughs> any, any reaching out. Um, but I mean, I'm just trying to think like what would make me happy. Obviously, them like fixing the problems. That's number one. That's what I really care about. Uh, as far as amends, you know, I would say like, well, just fixing the game is good enough. But yeah, I already. I already paid for a game like with the understanding that it would be working. So that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's kind of like when, when someone says something like, uh, you know, Oh gosh, I'm trying to think of an example that wouldn't be offensive. Someone's like, you know what? I don't beat my wife. Well, great. You're not supposed to beat your wife. Like, <laughs> that's not like you don't get a medal for that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's just, yeah. so it's not like, guess what? We're going to fix the game for you. 
cool. I already gave you 60 bucks. It's about time. You know, <laughs> I, I paid for a game. I that would was expected. <laughs> right. So, you know, what would make me feel like, okay, they care or they're, they're pretending like they care so they can make money long term. Um, I do enough marketing to understand how that works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Premium 10, 20 bucks. I would feel pretty good about that. Um, them adding a bunch of features to some of the expansions or condensing some of the expansions or something just to make it so it's not like them dumping them all on you. Yeah. Um, I would appreciate that. Um, I don't know, something like that. Just something in game. Getting rid of battle packs, that'd make me happy because they're really confusing and I want to do all the unlocks for all the guns, but it's hard to figure out exactly how to do that right now. Actually, uh, battle packs are a very good thing for people that just play the game uh, in bursts like, like Joel because it's essentially uh, extra unlocks outside of your normal unlock chain. So Right, but the normal unlock chain is smaller though, right? Uh, for me, it's been faster. Uh, everything but pistols. Pistols, you're gonna want to do a pistol only server to get those more quickly. But no, I'm saying you have you have fewer things in your regular unlock chain to get some stuff. You ha I mean, to get a lot of the stuff, you have to go right, through battle right. packs. There's probably I think it's it's about one third of the accessories for guns are battle pack only, but none of them are required. Like you don't need those battle pack only accessories to use the gun well. Um, mm -hmm. In most cases, they don't so much add better features as alternative features. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, for the most part, battle packs for me have actually just, just been a way to increase my amount of unlocks coming in and to get more things faster. Mm -hmm. Especially because once you hit level, I think, 52, uh, every rank you get a gold, bat uh, gold battle pack right there. It's quite a lot of stuff in this. Man, I'm at rank 7 or 8. I think I'm like 72 now. Uh, yeah, one thing you get in battle packs that also helps is uh, you get XP boosters. And I believe I've gotten two or three of the 200% XP boosters, and they stacked with double XP. So I had rounds playing with Yakko where I'd have like a 200% XP booster on. I'd rank up like two and a half times in a single round of conquest. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm ranked 74 right now. Um, wait, you're 74? It means you've prestiged? Uh, oh, no, no, top, no, 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 no. Top wait. rank is 110. They're not doing the colonel thing? Yeah, uh, I am... Gosh, I'm Chief Warrant Officer 5, which is rank okay. 74. I, instead of having all the ranks above a certain point be colonel, I think they made up a bunch of ranks to fill out the, the middle part. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's where Battlefield's at. Um... I'm really hoping that, like Battlefield 3, in, like three months it's going to be the most incredibly smooth experience it's just going to blow your mind and thankfully there's still some fun to be had on the way there i just wish we could get there faster because we've already paid for it and this being a um i don't know a, an evolutionary game versus a revolutionary game it really shouldn't have been this bad i don't think it's it's disappointing to see yeah, it's it's disappointing. I you know I believe them that they're trying to fix all this. Um, they seem like they want to. Um, it, I don't I don't think it's too little too late. I mean it's only been like a month since the game came out. Um, but they definitely could not proceed like they have been going because they're like releasing new content and the old content doesn't even work properly. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's never the way to do it. So if they can get this ironed out, I'm sure a year from now, I'll be enjoying Battlefield and everything will be hunky-dory. Um, but as it is right now, I'm not going to buy premium until the game works. Um, I haven't gotten 60 bucks of enjoyment out of it. I haven't even got 20 bucks. So, I'm, you know, considering I can get great games in Humble Bundles like once a month that we play <laughs> and have tons of fun in, I have no motivation to throw more money into Battlefield uh, until it works. Yeah. So, Maybe giving away China Rising would be a, a good apology. That would, that would be that'd be a start. Premium, premium members get like fifteen dollars back on their premium on their origin accounts, and everyone else gets China Rising for free. Um, or they could give away. I'd rather have them give away the Battlefield Three maps. Kind of like a hey, you loved Battlefield Three so much and hate everything about Battlefield Four. Have some nostalgia from a year <laughs> and a half ago. Yeah, we still have no word when we're actually getting Second Assault. It's out on the Xbox One right now. Oh, it uh, is? Yeah, it, it was out on launch day for the Xbox One, thanks to Microsoft's piles of uh, piles of cash. Which you enjoyed very much. <laughs> yeah, which I definitely enjoyed. Thanks for the state dinner, Microsoft. <laughs> uh, 
but um yeah i think I, there, there was like, like a, a rumor going around that we'll get second assault in like february whoa which is three months of exclusive Xbox well, One access. At this point, uh, that's that's probably fine if they just need to work on it until February. Uh, but mean, you haven't had a taste of the new Caspian Border. I have. Yeah, but I haven't really had a taste of the vanilla maps either. <laughs> Sounds like you have some tasting to do. <laughs> I have a lot of tasting to do. I want to taste it. I, I want it in my mouth. <laughs> all right. Uh, Don't but, we all? Maybe... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But that's where we're at with Battlefield. Like, we could talk about this for a long time, but, I mean, honestly... It, that sums the, it up, I think, yeah. At the end of the day, it's games. Let us know what you think. Um, you know, if you think we're being really unfair, or if you think we weren't harsh enough, let us know. Um, but, yeah, that's our opinions on it. Now, before we go tonight, uh, we have something to announce. Is You're tonight right? we're announcing that? Yeah, we said we were going to tonight. Cool. Hey, look, I'm half asleep. You just do your thing. <laughs> like, you don't remember, you don't remember tonight was the night? Nope. I'm guessing you don't have your lines memorized for the skit. Don't you do this to me. <laughs> I will make up a skit. Don't are you, you trying? Are you, just, are you just tired enough? You're like, it was I supposed to have a skit. <laughs> <laughs> I had to process it for about a second and a half there just to make sure. Oh, I sure. saw it. We all watched. We all watched. <laughs> Kids, rewind. Watch it in 720p. Um, okay. So we are not going to have a podcast next week. Wait, did I tell you that? I don't think I told you that. I can't have a podcast next week. You are welcome to have a podcast next hey week. Hey guys, apparently there's no podcast next week. <laughs> I have I have got a, a work event I have to be at next Thursday. Um and I have I something more to announce about that soon. Soon. Uh, soon. That's you Dean already, Hall's favorite word. Soon. <laughs> you already know that announcement, but I'll I'll share it with the public soon. That's right. Um and but the thing we want to announce wow, this is a horrible way to hype up an announcement. Um the nineteenth, <laughs> the nineteenth of December, we are having a very special podcast. You've been requesting it for a while, people have been excited, and it is happening. The Loot Cast twenty thirteen holiday extravaganza <laughs> is happening on the nineteenth of December. We are With a name to, like that, how can you go wrong? <laughs> we've been talking about we're gonna have a little podcast all about loot. This is going to be it. We're not gonna talk about the news unless um unless Daisy is out. Um we're not gonna talk about news. We're just it's gonna be just like straight loot. The whole time we're going to give away lots of loot if you want a bunch of free game codes i yeah. don't know how we're going to give them away yet but you need to be watching this i have a two-page word document completely <laughs> full of game codes and i've got some so, to add too actually yeah this is this is going to be good um so you definitely 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 want to be there um, and besides all of the talk about loot i'm sure we're going to have some loot confessions that joel and i are planning uh, we're both planning on recording some actual video feeds of some loot confessions. I'm going to take you guys on a brief tour of my Skyrim loot hoard in my house upstairs. Oh, where you I wish. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Where, where you, you fling the door open and jewels are flying everywhere because the whole room is just <laughs> full of crap. I'm going to have I, some YouTube videos queued up so we can all watch them together. I wish I still had my PS3. My brother used to play Oblivion on my PS3. Oh, no. <laughs> And uh, he didn't have a loot hoarding house. He had a loot museum where he had things laid out and organized. This is the kid whose room looked like a tornado went through it all the time <laughs> uh, and didn't believe showers were like a totally 100% necessary thing. Oh, uh, gross. But his, uh, his oblivion house had like the swords laid out on the bed and he had like are the armor hanging up or laid out or like it was all fancy he had his rooms for alchemy and the rooms for bows and all oh my gosh so much work went into this thing like it's amazing it, it just makes you go oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's like hey, hey that's that's pretty cool that's uh, cool i guess man if, 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 i think if you're you gonna got a do problem. it if you're gonna do it might as well do that <laughs> but uh you know it's good when you get to a point where TLC might actually want to do a show about you. <laughs> <laughs> Hoarders Games Edition. But, uh, yeah. So that's it, guys. Um, that's Loot the podcast Cast for this 2013. week. Loot Cast 2013 Holiday Extravaganza. Yeah. Um, please don't do your... Yeah, you're not a hype man. I am half asleep right now. That that half-hearted yeah is all you're gonna you're, get. You're skinny and white, Dave. Just you know, 
Yeah, boy. <laughs> oh, oh, you're shaking your me, boy. Am I going too far? <laughs> I'm going too far. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, follow us on Twitter. I say follow us on Twitter every podcast. You really should follow us on Twitter because if you want us to tweet out what questions we're going to be talking about, what topics are going on in the podcast and stuff, Twitter is the place to do that. So follow us on Twitter for that. We don't spam you with things. We actually don't tweet as much as we should probably. Probably uh, not. <laughs> probably not. But that is where if you want updates on things, you want to be a part of the podcast, go to Twitter. Casual Shenanaga. Uh, Germ Gaming, Evil Viking, and then obviously YouTube, everything else. Write it and be a part of the show. Casual Shenanigans at gmail.com. So, uh, Dave, you have anything else before we get out of here? I'm going to go pass out, I think. All right. You go pass out and have fun. This means no Age of Empires <laughs> tonight for you, I'm guessing? Probably not. I, I'll end up in my, my plate of food I didn't finish right here in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Just face down in this potato salad. <laughs> All right. Well, well, you take it easy. Everyone else, uh, have a good day week everything else and uh, i hope everyone had a good thanksgiving um yeah. unless you are not in america and don't celebrate thanksgiving in which case i hope your weekend was pretty good anyway and uh yep yeah, we will all <laughs> we will talk to you guys just go later. ahead and say it i i can't fight it just just say it i have to wait for you to say bye that has to be the last thing we say that's the thing like all right guys we'll see you later good night guys stay casual <laughs>